Greetings, Saints. I trust everyone's week has been going well. As we approach the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, one of the readings in the lectionary is Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 20, which follows the blessings and the cursings on Mount Gerizim. The words are well familiar to us. I want to read them to you and then just share a few brief thoughts. Moses said, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, there are all sorts of ways in which people tend to read this passage. I want to just do the best I can to make this as practical as possible and also make us aware of the wisdom that's here. The entire passage here breaks down into choices and promises, choices and consequences, and the admonition to wisely choose life. God has promised life and prosperity to the people of Israel, his beloved nation. All of their life, if they kept his commandments and learned that obedience was tied to listening, we're going to talk about that for a moment. Obedience was tied to listening. It wasn't simply when we think of obeying his commandments as Torah and the, the Ten Commandments and all that is entailed, but the Word and the Spirit, the, the Scripture and the voice of God together have to be listened to. So the overall framework of loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength and with all our might and loving our neighbor as ourself laid out in the Decalogue has to become a daily way of living that is realized from the inside out, that there is a sense in which this is not about following the letter of the law. This is about the life-giving spirit of the triune God enabling us as New Covenant believers to realize that choices are tied to the promises of God. And as we live in the love of the triune God, as we share in the triune life of giving and receiving between the Father and the Son by the Spirit, that we are moved on not only to love God through Christ, but to love one another and then to love even our enemies, Jesus says. And that in that kind of loving obedience, we're not just meditating on words that were uttered thousands of years ago, but the life-giving spirit, the voice of the Godhead, is moving us continually into a lifestyle where we continue to choose that loving lifestyle, that honoring lifestyle, that loyal lifestyle, because we have a covenant with a God who loves us in an everlasting way. His loyal love has certain requirements for us, and our requirements in this God's loyal love covenant is that we walk in obedience. And that obedience brings about safety and security, fruitfulness and flourishing. Now, when you think about the nation of Israel while they were in the wilderness, they were tented in God. 
that the, the, the glory, the Shekinah, surrounded them behind and before as they exited Egypt. But when they got in the wilderness, they were encamped around the glory. So the notion of prosperity, I understand that there have been many abuses to the message of prosperity. Let's look at prosperity from a biblical perspective when God promises they will prosper. It is the assurance that the umbrella of the divine overshadowing presence, the glory, the Shekinah, would tempt the people of God continually wherever they were. And under the shadow of the Almighty, they would find safety, security, fruitfulness, flourishing. The eyes of the Lord would be on them continually. The smile of God would be on them. They were to learn in the wilderness how to navigate their way through the wilderness by faith, knowing that the constant, changeless God, the God of the everlasting covenant, the God of loyal love, would be with them regardless of what they faced. That was to prepare them for entering into the rest of the promised land where everything they could have ever hoped for would be entrusted to them that they might steward it and enjoy the blessings of God and not forget God and out of forgetting God, commit idolatry. So here are these choices that are tied to promises. Every promise for you and I in the scripture is in Christ Jesus, and it's all yes and amen. But with every choice we make, we have to discern the leading of the Spirit. We're to know that he has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly before our God, a new American standard, to do justice, to love loyalty, and to walk humbly before our God, so that justice and loyalty are to be outworked in our relationships with others. It's not just don't smoke or chew or go with those that do. That is, that's external. It's walking in the love, the loyalty, the justice, the mercy of Christ with everyone we encounter so that there are these promises that are given to us that if we will participate in the triune life faithfully, we will see the blessing of God. Solomon says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. We will be blessed, as Psalm 1 says, we're bearing fruit in every season, fertility and fruitfulness, flourishing instead of languishing. So that when we make choices, we want to realize, and we make choices every single day. And making choices involves the process of discernment. Because there are certain times it's not enough to see what the scripture says. We need the spirit to enlighten us as to how to apply it. We need to listen deeply inside to the voice of the spirit as the spirit is showing us things in scripture that we need to flesh out in our daily life. Always remembering that every choice we make has a consequence. Every choice can be tied to a promise. And when we act in a way of faith, choosing based on the promises of God, there are outcomes that we will get that are amazing. They're wonderful. They're blessed. But if we choose to dishonor or disavow or disobey the very scriptures the very voice, the very life of the triune God that we participate in. There are consequences that lead to not life, but death. And Moses ends by saying, since you've been instructed that there are choices and promises, choices and consequences, life and death, blessing and adversity, choose life. Now, Choosing life isn't always easy because sometimes in life you have to do the hard thing. Justice demands that at times we go against the grain and do the hard thing. 
knowing that it's pleasing to the Father and we're bearing witness to the loyal love of a God who desires that all human beings come to experience his goodness, his mercy, his grace. I remember years ago when I first was saved hearing that song, you're the only Jesus others may see. And when we realize that we share in the triune life, that Christ has brought us into his communion of giving and receiving with his Father, so that when we say our Father, we are piggybacking on Jesus, as Robert W. Jensen says, and sharing with him in our imperfect praying where he perfects our praying, our worship, and our works, so that before the Father we share in the blessings that belong to Christ as the elect Son, chosen from before the foundation of the world. God still sets life and death before us. Choices still are tied to promises, and they're better promises in the new covenant. And choices still have consequences. It's amazing to me when I see the human condition again and again and again in the people helping business, how some people continue to choose that which is destructive, that which is self-sabotaging, that which is deleterious to their well-being. Out of their brokenness and their inability to sort out the interlocking of good and evil, they don't discern well. I don't want to condemn them. I want them to come to a place of seeing the healing and the wholeness and the well-being that they can have in Christ. May all of us strive to choose based on the promises of God, and to choose with the awareness that there are consequences, and to realize that the kingdom is relationship. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself, and discerning how that love is to be worked out knowing that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to the saving knowledge of Christ the Son. Every day of your life, you're making choices. Every day of your life, you're obtaining outcomes because the choices you make determine the outcomes you get. Choose well, love well, live well. On Sunday, we're gonna continue looking at the journey of Saul on his way to the throne and the three signs that come upon him after Samuel anoints him and declares to him that these three signs will come upon you today. What do those signs have to do with the way God serendipitously leads us into an elegant future by his irresistible grace? We're going to find out on Sunday. Come expecting. Bring somebody with you. Love you.